I've had anemia my whole life, so I've always had a little bit lower levels of iron and since growing up had some issues with folate as well. So it's a nutritional deficiency for me. Growing through the stages of life and having these major growth spurts, I would get a little bit more anemic than usual and it became unmanageable. It's literally in school, I would pass out after PE. We'd have the whole emergency room situation, an ambulance comes, very embarrassing if I'm honest. And then I would be at the hospital and they'd say, oh, you're anemic and the only treatment is some nutritional help. The genesis of Anemo Check Home actually came out of a senior design project at Georgia Tech. So as a biomedical engineering student, we're paired up in teams and we were given topics to work on. Um, fortunately for me, one of the topics of interest was creating a test for anemia that could be used in even the simplest of settings. And I remembered thinking about this chemical method. I got some insight from a few professors at Georgia Tech on some chemistry, on what reacts with blood, what reacts with hemoglobin. And we um, nailed this chemical reaction in a, in a spur of a moment of frustration, actually. We um, were testing in the lab and I was trying very hard to add blood to this chemical to get the color to change and everything was just red. I was so frustrated. I remember just like hitting something on the counter of the lab bench and it was enough to have just a tiny, tiny bit of blood land into the solution I had made and then voila, the solution turns blue. Anemo Check Home works by taking a small amount of blood from your finger and mixing it with a pre-filled vial of solution. Essentially what's happening is your viable hemoglobin is reacting with the components of that solution and the result is a chromogenic agent. So it's exhibiting color upon reacting in this reaction. So the amount of hemoglobin you have correlates to how much of this chromogen is being created. And specifically with this chemical, the colors range from blue to yellow. So when your levels are very, very low, you have this blue color. When your levels get a little higher, there's more of this reaction happening. It progresses to a yellow. And then the beauty of our color scale is that blood is red. So when we get into high levels of hemoglobin, then you, the literal color of your blood starts to compete with these, this yellow color. And you get the oranges and the reds that you see at the end of the color scale. Access is key to changing people's lives, even in fairly developed settings, there are still places where getting access to health information, which is probably one of the most paramount things you should be worried about, is limited. I believe any piece of information about your health that can then lead to a better proactive approach or something to help fix something that's wrong is something that's good. Frankly, I'm tired of the get sick and then get care model, and it needs to be a lot more proactive for us to be sustainable and live longer lives.